I said, I can't move. I said, there's a shock going through my whole body. I can't feel anything, man. I still remember the day I was in the film room watching film and I was watching the California Bears and my defensive backs coach Larry Slade came in the room. He said, Inky Johnson, I got some good news for you. And I dropped the clicker and I said, coach, what is it? He said, son, you're a projected top 30 draft pick. He said, all you have to do is play these next 10 football games. You're an automatic multimillionaire. I ran out of the room. I got on the phone. I called my mother and my grandmother. I said, listen, I said, after this season, our lives are about to change forever. And little did I know our lives were really about to change. The first game we come out, play against California Bears, I get an interception, we shut them down, we get the victory. Second game, we're playing against Air Force, it gets late in the game, found ourselves in a dogfight, and I approach the tackle like I approach any other tackle, and the way I'm approaching it, either I'm gonna knock you out or you're gonna knock me out. I'm 165 pounds, I can't play with anybody. But at the point of contact, when I hit this guy, something different happened that had never happened to me before in my life. I hit him and it seemed as if every breath in my body left. My body went completely limp, I fell to the ground, I blacked out. I looked at the doctor because I couldn't feel my right arm. They had poked me with all type of needles. Inky, can you feel this? Can you feel I couldn't feel a thing? They took me back, they ran the CAT scans, and they rolled me back into my room, and I'll never forget it. All in about a 15 second time frame, I was lying there in my bed. My father, he went to take a step in and he looked at me and he said, son, I can't do it. And he walked out. My mother, she came in, she was running. She kissed me on my forehead, she said a prayer. She said, ain't everything is gonna be okay, and she ran out. And as soon as my mother stepped outside of the room, the doctor rushed in from the opposite side, and he said, hey, get in here, we gotta rush this guy back to emergency surgery, he's about to die. I said, what? I said, my mom just told me everything was going to be okay. He said, son, what happened? You have busted up some clavian artery in your chest, you're bleeding internally. I have to rush you back and take the main vein out of your left leg and plug it into your chest in order to save your life. And when I woke up from recovery, the same doctor was standing over me. He said, Inky, I have some good news and some bad news for you. I said, you got some bad news for me? I have to tell him I was about to die. I'm still alive. How bad can it get? I'm still here. He said, the good news is, son, we saved your life. I said, thank you, sir. He said, the bad news is you have nerve damage in your right shoulder. You probably can never play the game of football again in your life. I said, Doc, no disrespect, man, but I'm, I'm eight games away. I've been working for this ever since I was seven years old, Doc. There's no way. God, not now, God. Like, let me make it to the NFL so I can help my family first. Like, I, we miss Mills. I said, there's no way. I never cheated. I never cheated myself. I gave everything I had to it, and I respected it. I never cheated. There's no way that my career can be over. I said, send me up to the Mayo Clinic. And after several visits, I'll never forget, this is when reality set in. It was me, my mother, my father in the room, and the doctors came in. They said, Inky Johnson, here's the deal. They said, son, we hate to tell you, but your arm, it would never be the same again. Your hand, it would never be the same again. Son, you can never play the game of football again. They said, son, here are your surgery options. We could take a muscle out of the back of your left leg, plug it into your right arm, but there's a possibility that you'll be left with a weak left leg and a weak right arm the rest of your life. Or we can take a nerve out of your left arm, reroute it up to your chest, down into your right arm, but there's a possibility that you'll be left with two weak arms the rest of your life. Or we can take a nerve out of your left rib, reroute it up to your chest, down into your right arm, but there's a possibility that you'll be left with a breathing problem and a weak right arm the rest of your life. By the way, tell us what you want to do in the morning. And the next morning I walked into the doctor's office, they said, son, what option did you choose? I said, no disrespect to you, doc, I'm not choosing an option, my situation is out of your hands. I said, no disrespect to you, doc. Cut me where you got to cut me. I said, I know I will come out of this situation okay. As I stand right here on this stage before you today, they cut me six times down my left thigh. They cut me two times across my right rib. They cut me two times across my right pec. They cut me one time across the left side of my neck, one time across the right side of my neck. They cut me from the bottom of my armpit all the way down to the bottom of my hand. And after they got through cutting on me, they said, son, you're going to be in this hospital for the next 40 days. I walked out of the hospital on the third day. They said, you broke a record. How did you do it? And I said, first and foremost, the thing I want you all to understand, I will never let a circumstance or a situation define my life. But most importantly, you know what I had invested? I had sweat equity. I had been working my whole life. And what I didn't understand by being determined to chase something, by being committed to it, and what commitment is, commitment is staying true to what you said you were going to do long after the mood that you have set it in has left. You see, people think commitment is saying, yes, I'll do it on the days when it feel good. 
but I have been committed to everything that I ever started in my life and I never stopped and I never quit it. And so by being committed to everything that I started, I finished it. It built a certain type of spirit. It built a certain type of mentality. It built a certain type of individual. And so now I couldn't quit even if I wanted to. I couldn't lay in the bed even if I wanted to. I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. I had too much sweat equity in my life and everything that I was doing. I understood the process is more important than the product. It wasn't about the outcome for me. Whether I made it to the NFL or not, that was inconsequential in God's plan for my life. But I was going to fall in love with that process because I understood by falling in love with that process, it was going to turn me into a machine. A lot of people need a little extra money to get motivated. A lot of people need, you know, whatever the case may be, a little bonus to get motivated. I don't need anything but breath in my body and life. And every day I wake up, I understand I got two children depending on me. I understand I got a wife depending on me. I understand I got a world that needs me. The reason I go at life with the passion and the zeal that I go at it with is because I understand every day of my life is somebody in the world that is depending on me. It may not be you. And if it's just about you, you're in trouble because I'm telling you, you're going to hit something in life that's a lot tougher than you. And it's going to test your will and it's going to test your heart. And if it's just about you and if it's just about the product, it will crush you. Every day I get up, I understand it's somebody in a free world that's looking at me to see if I'm going to keep going and so I can't quit and so I went back to school the next week after they had just saved my life I was back in class I had to learn how to write all over again I had to learn how to walk all over again I had to learn how to tie my shoe all over again I had to learn how to bathe all over again I had to learn how to live life all over again never one time did I say let me go home I need a break you see the thing we have to understand about everything that we're a part of first and foremost it's a blessing by God and when it's a blessing, you can't help but to give everything you got to it. My life got saved. I got spared my life. I almost died. The doctor came to me on the field. He was on one knee and he grabbed my wrist and he said, son, you don't have a pulse. I don't even know how you're still living. The thing about it, my wound, like you can see this. You can see my arm. My wound is visible. But it's a lot of people in this room that are wounded. And you can't see it. And it's internal. And so the, the opportunities that we pass up to be a blessing to other people, we can save their life with just one encounter. And my last doctor visit, they came to me and they said, sorry, Inky Johnson, you will never be able to use this arm and hand again in your life. I said, no disrespect to you, doc, but I will use this arm and this hand every day for the rest of my life by the way that I live my life. Every day I'm going to impact someone's life. Every day I'm going to empower someone. Every day I'm going to inspire someone. Every day I'm going to encourage someone.